What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today, we're going to look at my early thoughts on Ultra Prism. The set is being released, I believe, one week from the upload of this video. And then it is legal for St. Louis Collinsville Regionals, which is standard format. So I'm going to be looking at the cards I think we'll see have success in the standard format um, once they're legal, which is mid-February. So yeah, let's get into it. So on the left, we have the cards that I expect to see in the standard meta right away. And on the right, we have cards that I think um, still need a bit of testing that I'm not completely sure about. So first, we're going to look at Leafeon GX. Um, Leafeon GX, 200 HP, Grass type, Stage 1, evolves from Eevee, which means we have energy evolution ev at our disposal which reads when you attach a basic energy um, from your hand to your pokemon during this turn to this pokemon during your turn you may search your deck for a card that evolves from this pokemon that is the same type of that energy and put it onto this pokemon to evolve it so you put a grass energy oh sorry you put a grass energy onto this ev and you can search your deck for a leafy on gx and evolve it so that's really good um so, which means you can potentially have Leafeon GX out on the first turn of the game, or your first turn of the game, um, which means you can use Grand Bloom really early. So, it's ability Breath of the Leaves. If this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, once during your turn before your attack, you may heal 50 damage from one of your Pokemon that has any energy attached to it. So, this isn't uh, the reason that I like Leafeon GX, but... That Breath of the Leaves ability is really nice to have. Um, Solar Beam, Grass Energy, and DCE, 110. Not too bad. Um, <clears throat> again, um, it's damage. This attack isn't um, what we're looking at it for. So it's pretty good damage um, considering it, that it has an amazing attack otherwise. So this is just its uh, kind of the icing on the cake, Solar Beam. What we're really looking at is Grand Bloom GX. For one Grass Energy, you um, <clears throat> the text reads for each of your bench Pokemon for any, each of your benched basic Pokemon. Yeah, each of your benched basic Pokemon. Search your deck for a card that evolves from that Pokemon, and put it onto that Pokemon, and then shuffle your deck. So this is your GX attack. Um, so this is. And this has some obvious synergy for Decidueye, and that's what I think we're going to see it in a lot. Um, because you can just energy evolve, bridge it for three Rowlets or two Rowlets and a Zorua, and uh, Grand Bloom GX up to Dartrix or whatever else you have on your bench, and get out Decidueyes as early as turn two. So that's, um, that's really, really powerful. Um, it's, yeah, it's a really, really good GX attack, so just accelerating your evolutions for Decidueye, um, or whatever deck it is you're playing it in, uh, it's kind of reminiscent of Forest of Giant Plants, which got banned and also would have rotated anyway, um, but yeah, it's Grand Bloom GX, I think you're gonna be seeing a bit of this around, um, League Cups and Regionals as soon as... Or standard League Cups and Regionals as soon as Ultra Prism is legal. <clears throat> um, so, a couple deck ideas that we could put this in. Like I said, I think the most obvious is making Leafy on Decidueye with a thin Zorark line. Um, accelerate your energy, uh, accelerate your evolution of Decidueye. Um, having Decidueyes out as early as turn two because of Grand Bloom GX. Um, I think a fun deck idea, I'm not sure how competitive it would be, is Leafeon with the Loranus promo, Sunny Day, the attacks of your Grass and Fire Pokemon do 20 more damage, and with Loranus GX, um, to use Loranus to buff both Loranus GX's and Leafeon GX's attacks by 20 for each Loranus promo on your bench, and just use the Grand Bloom to get them out really early and consistently. Or you could even just save your GX attack for Chlorosythe GX, but then I don't know uh, why you're even running Leafeon GX in the deck at that point. I think the whole point of running Leafeon would be 
Grand Bloom, all of your Loranises on the first turn. And then use Solar Beam for buffed damage with Choice Ban and Sunny Day. And Breath of the Leaves could also have some synergy with Loranis GX because of healing 30 damage. But like I said, I think we'll be mostly seeing this paired with Decidueye. So next on my list is Glaceon GX. Um, so let's look at this card. Glaceon GX, Stage 1 evolves from Eevee, so we have energy evolution at our disposal again if we um if we attach a water energy we can just evolve our eevee straight up into glaceon gx 200 hp water type its ability is the big thing here freezing gaze as long as this pokemon is your active pokemon your opponent's pokemon gx and ex in play in their hand and in their discard pile have no abilities except for freezing gaze so uh, this is this is really really good if you start out with an Eevee you energy evolve it uh, With a water energy if as long as Glaceon's in your deck you can evolve it and right off the bat your opponent has no abilities um, on their Their abilities on their uh, EX and GX Pokemon don't work. So things like trade don't it does not work things like um, so Tapu Lele's Wonder Tag which is most decks turn one play if they don't have the supporter of their choice already in their hand wonder tag doesn't work trade doesn't work uh just because we have it on the screen feather arrow doesn't work so uh abilities on gx and ex pokemon are really strong and trade and wonder tag are really common in this format and just being able to stop them as long as glaceon gx is active is ridiculous um, so it also has two attacks, which are pretty good. Frost Bullet for a Water and a DCE. It does 90 and then 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So this is reminiscent of Night Spear on Darkrai EX, 90-30. Um, I think we also saw a 90-30 attack on um, Umbreon GX. And then Polar Spear, Polar Spear GX. I kind of wanted to say Polar Bear there. Polar Spear GX. Um, for the same energy cost as Frost Bullet, this attack does 50 damage for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. So if you hit a Pokemon with Frost Bullet on the bench, it has three damage counters already from that. If it was not healed, you can bring it up and hit Polar Spear GX for 150 damage on something that already had 30 Maybe with a choice ban, make it 180. That's 210 damage, which is a sweet number in this format because of Zorak GX and Golisopod GX. Um, so the first archetype that everyone's jumping to for Glaceon GX is Glaceon Zorak GX, just because we've seen how well Zorak GX synergizes with Stage 1 Pokemon and pretty much with anything, just because trade its ability that allows you to discard a card from your hand to draw two more cards just uh, it gives really really good draw power to a lot of decks and Zorak is also pretty tanky at 210 HP being a stage one and Riotous Beating is also a really good attack on the card so uh, I've, people have been comparing Zorak GX to Claydol from Great Encounters EX from I couldn't even tell you what format. It's from a while ago, though. Uh, maybe 2006 Great Encounters came out? It's been a while. But anyway, Claydol had um, Cosmic Power, which was put up to two cards from your hand at the bottom of your deck and then draw until you have six. And Claydol was seen in a lot of decks. Um, the same way we're seeing Zorak GX in so many decks as the draw power. The thing that makes Zorak GX so, so good over uh, draw supports like that in the past is that it also has a really good attack. And some of these Zorak decks, uh, Zorak GX is even the main attacker and the draw support. So that's just so good. Um, and to have that on your bench and at your disposal to attack with while you're locking your opponent's abilities with Glaceon GX in the active, just seems like a really strong combination. So they really don't have inherent synergy. Uh, it's just you can lock your opponent's abilities while drawing cards with trade. 
Um, I guess the synergy that could lie in there is that you're trading away possibly water energy, and then you can later use aqua patches to get those water energy back. The same way uh, we kind of saw the synergy between Alola Ninetales and Zorark GX earlier in um, Zorark's legality. Um, so that's one archetype I think we're going to see a lot of. Uh, next, I've been seeing people tinkering and talking about Glaceon Decidueye, so that would work the same way, um, well not the same way, but it would be a similar a similar lineup as Glaceon, as Leafeon Decidueye, except you're using Glaceon to lock your opponent out of abilities while you set up Decidueye and then hopefully start feather houring them while they have a poor setup because of the Freezing Gaze. Um, I think it's not the place to use Glaceon, and I also think it's not the right partner for Decidueye. Um, but I might be proven wrong. It definitely is an interesting concept, I just think it would be too slow right now. Um, and then down here I put two other kind of sets of cards. Possibly we would see something with like Necrozma and Tapu Lele, maybe Tapu Coco. Um, damage spread decks just because we have the um, the frost bullet that does 30 damage so if you can get an early lock on your opponent and kind of stop them from setting up you can just spread damage around and just make that get out of control as um, the game progresses another set of cards I have over here is enhanced hammer crushing hammer and Cyrus pretty much a disruption based deck um, I believe that Omnipoke has already put out something about a Glaceon GX disruption deck. And I believe that um, Jeremiah from Seagrove wrote a Glaceon GX article over at FlipsideGaming.com. And he listed three different ideas for Glaceon GX. So I definitely suggest going over to Flipside Gaming to check out his article if you want to see like full lists and details about what the matchups might be like and certain card choices right here i'm just giving you an overview for the potential archetypes i think we're going to see glaceon gx used in and also why i think glaceon gx is going to make an impact on the standard meta so next we have garchomp and lucario we're going to talk about these cards together just because that's the way they are meant to be played um, I have Garchomp's translation down here, and <coughs> Lucario's abilities translation right here. So Garchomp is a stage 2, 150 HP Dragon type Pokemon. Its first attack for 2 colorless energy is this attack does 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Don't apply weakness and resistance for bench Pokemon. Um, this is its backup attack if you can't get its stronger attack going. And it's really not a bad backup attack as uh, as secondary attacks go. Um, it's the same as Alolan Ninetales Ice Blade. Uh, just 50 anywhere for a DCE. So not bad. Um, but the big attack we're looking at here is Champion's Blade. For a Fighting Energy and 2 Colorless, which will oftentimes I... I believe it will be a fighting and a DCE. It does 100 damage, and if you played Cynthia, a new supporter we just got, from your hand during this turn, this attack does 100 more damage. So if you played Cynthia, which is a damn good draw supporter that we'll be talking about in a second, um, not only did you get the use of a really good supporter card, but your Garchomp is now doing 200 damage instead of 100. And on a non-GX, non non-EX stage 2, that's pretty good. It's really good, actually, because you're hitting 200 damage for a fighting and a DCE. If your opponent returns the knockout, they're only getting one prize, and you can make it do 230 with a choice bin. So Garchomp's partner is one of Cynthia's other Pokemon in the game, I believe. It's kind of the whole theme they're going for here, Garchomp, Lucario, and Cynthia. Um, its ability is what we're looking at, Arasite. Once during your turn before your attack, if you have Garchomp in play, you may search your deck for one card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. So if you have Lucario in play and you have Garchomp in play, you can search your deck for a card once a turn and put it into your hand. 
that's a free computer search that's a free just one search no um no drawbacks just get one card of any kind from your deck into your hand you don't even have to show your opponent since it's any kind of card um this could be the cynthia that you need to play um to max out your champion's blade damage it could be the pal pad to put your cynthia back into the deck and then search it out with lele um, it's just really, really strong to be able to search your deck for any one card. The reason why drawing cards is so powerful is because you're trying to get um, as many options into your hand. And when you have a straight up just search, that's better than um, any draw support when you only need one card because you're just getting that one card. So Garchomp Lucario, I think, is going to be um, a strong archetype. I personally am going to be testing it out with a 1-1 or 2-2 like in Rock GX line in it because just at first glance, um, if you're playing Cynthia to max out your damage, that means you're not playing Guzma that turn, and that means you have to be hitting whatever is active. So um, the 200 damage sounds great, but the not being able to maneuver around which of your opponent's Pokemon you're hitting doesn't really appeal to me, so I think I'm going to try it with Lycanroc GX um, It's with its Bloodthirsty Eyes ability, which when you evolve it, you bring up a Pokemon from your opponent's bench, kind of like a Lysander, except it's activated by evolving that Pokemon. Um, but yeah, we'll see if that gets too clunky, and if it does, then I will just try it out with out guard without uh like in rock gx and see if we can go without guzma -ing for massive amounts of damage next on this slide i have cynthia cyrus and pal pad these are the three trainer cards that i think are really good out of the set um there are um some other trainer cards that are in interesting like gardenia um but these are the three that really stand out so Cynthia, like I was just talking about, you need that to activate Garchomp's um, full potential with Champion's Blade. But uh, I think Cynthia will be seen in almost every deck. It's just so, so nice to finally have another draw supporter that's really good to choose from. Because for so long we've had all decks just... <clears throat> excuse me. We've had all decks just have the default, well, I guess I'm throwing N and Sycamore here, but now we finally have another choice, which could potentially help some decks. And it also makes deck building a little more fun. So Cynthia's uh, the supporter. When you play it, shuffle your hand into your deck, then draw six cards. Um, so I think this will be played alongside N and Sycamore. I don't think it will completely replace either in most decks, but it's just um, really good to have a shuffle and draw six at your disposal like we used to have with Professor Oak's new theory um, So not a lot to explain on that card. It's just really good for what it does um, Then we have Cyrus Prism so you can only have one of this in your deck since it's a prism card and when it would be discarded It would go to the lost zone instead um, and this was recently errated. Um, the English card does not read the correct text. But the text I have up here is the correct text. Mm -hmm. So this card can only be used if your active Pokemon is water or metal type. Your opponent chooses two of their benched Pokemon. Then your opponent shuffles their other benched Pokemon and all cards attached to them into their deck. So this... This, the ability to make your opponent shuffle potentially three Pokemon off of their deck into their bench is really, really good. Now, the problem with this card is it is circumstantial, so your opponent would have to have more than two bench Pokemon on their deck that you deem useful and wanted um, for you to actually get use out of it. And to use it in the first place, you have to have a water or a metal type Pokemon in your active now, for decks like um, Gardevoir that run a low on bull picks and Octillery, you have some water Pokemon that might find their way into the active, um, and for any other deck that runs Octillery. But I think this will um, be most useful in decks like Glaceon GX, where you're oftentimes going to have a water Pokemon in the active, 
and it won't be as situational. Like, you want to make this card as the least amount situational as you can in your deck for it to um, be used, um, for it to have use in mo in all of your games possible. So, if you're, if it's in a Guard of RGX deck, you have to, one, have this card in your hand, two, not have discarded it earlier with a Sycamore, um, three, you... Well, let's let's uh, put one and two together. So the card has to be at your disposal, either in your hand or searchable by Lele or something like that. Two, you have to have a water or metal Pokemon in the active. So if you're playing a deck that's not primarily water or metal, you have to get one of your tech or support cards into the active. Um, without using Guzma, because this is going to be your supporter for the turn. And three, you have your opponent has to have a board state that you want to disrupt with this card. You don't want to just use it if you're shuffling Lele's back into your deck for your opponent so they can use them later. Um, it has to be something disruptable. So, if you are playing this in a deck that will oftentimes have one of those three met, which is um, a water Pokemon or a metal Pokemon in your active, you're taking away one of the situations that has to be met for this card to either um, legally be used, since you have to have the active Pokemon be water or metal, or one of the situations that you would deem necessary to, or even useful to use this card. Um, so I might have went on a little too much about Cyrus, but I think it will be frequently used in, more frequently used in decks that have main attackers or main support Pokemon or several water or metal Pokemon down at the same time, rather than in decks where like, oh, I play one alone Volt picks, maybe I'll throw this in. Uh, I'm not saying it won't be used in those kind of decks, but I think it will see the most use in decks that will frequently find itself with a water Pokemon active. And last on this slide, we have Palpad, which is an item card. Shuffle two supporters from your discard pile into your deck. So in standard format, we don't have Versus Seeker. The only way we're getting back supporters is with Puzzle of Time. Now, I think Palpad, there's not really much to go into about this. It's just... It's um, a pretty simple card. Just shuffle two supporter cards from your discard pile into your deck. So in decks like Garchomp Lucario, where you need to use Cynthia every turn, um, if every turn you're wanting to Champion's Blade, so you might need Pal Pad to get those Cynthias back. Um, maybe you're running four Guzmas and four Acerola in a Galissapod deck. You could cut one of those Guzma or one of those Acerola out for a Pal Pad, and it turns into two more of those supporters later in the game. So I think this is a really good card. It will help you get your resources back, um, which is sometimes a difficult thing to do in standard format. Next we have the new metal support. So I, I listed metal support under um, my right column earlier, which is, I think this needs more testing to see if it's going to make an impact on the standard meta once Ultra Prism is out. Um, let's look at these cards. In a vacuum, Dusk Main Necrozma is very power, very, very power, powerful. Sorry, <laughs> let me drink a little more water. So Dusk Main Necrozma, really good. HP 190, metal, basic Pokemon. So right off the bat, tanky HP for a basic Pokemon. Its first attack, Claw Slash, is nothing that great. Just three colorless for 60. Its second attack is what we're really looking at here. Meteor Tempest for three metal energy and a colorless. It does 220 and then discard three energy from this Pokemon. So 220. Let's say you're able to use this attack every turn because of energy excel. 220 is knocking out most things, and when it doesn't knock out, a choice band will allow you to knock out in one shot. Um, then Sun's Eclipse does 250 for three metal energy, so it allows you to take a one shot on anything that maybe Meteor Tempest wasn't one shotting. Um, but I don't think Sun's Eclipse is the uh, correct GX attack that we would be using in this kind of deck. Next we have Solgaleo Prism. Uh, Rising Star is its uh, attack we're looking at here. For a metal energy for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play, attach a metal energy from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. 
So if your opponent has four on the bench and one active, you search your deck for five metal energy and attach them however you want. Uh, really, really good. It's 160 HP on a basic Pokemon um, and a non-GX, non non-EX basic Pokemon. So if it gets knocked out after that, not a big deal. You just set up your board uh, really, really well. Magnezone. So it has um, what I usually call a Rain Dance ability. Um, as often as you like during your turn before your attack, you may attach a Metal Energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So, uh, just as much as you like during your turn, attach Metal Energy to your Pokemon. So, if you have a way to get your Metal Energy back every turn, like the new Stadium Mount Coronet, which reads, uh, once a turn, you can take two, ener two basic Metal Energy from your discard pile and put them into your hand. Uh, let's say you just use Meteor Tempest, discarding three energy uh, to do 220, knock something out. They don't return to knock you out. Next turn, you attach for turn. Uh, you mount Coronet 2 from the discard to your hand. And you use Magnetic Circuit to attach a second and third energy down for the turn. And just Meteor Tempest again. So if you can chain Meteor Tempests, I think uh, you'll have a good time playing this deck if you're, if you're able to set up like that. Uh, lastly, on this slide, we have the new Dialga GX. Um, this is 180 HP basic Pokemon. It's Dragon type, but it uses Metal Energy. Um, so we have Clock Up, draw cards until you have six cards in your hand for one Metal Energy. It's kind of uh, an attack that's there if you need it. Um, again, Shred isn't the attack we're looking at either. Metal, double colorless, 80 damage. This attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So you can get through things like um, Hoopa with this 80 damage. Or things like the Alola Ninetales, non-GX. Things that... Um, a shred, a shred attacks historically get through any kind of safeguard or um, whatever kind of guard attacks abilities that um, say the Pokemon can't be attacked by EX or GX Pokemon. So that's a useful attack to have. What we're really looking at here is Timeless GX for 3 Metal Energy and 2 Colorless Energy. It does 150 damage and once this turn is over it's your turn again. <clears throat> so let's say you just use Timeless GX to knock out something. Your opponent promotes a new Pokemon and then it's your turn again. So you can retreat this Dialga and bring up Duskmane and one-shot something else. You can potentially take four prizes um, in what would seem like one turn with Timeless GX because you'll attack and then your turn ends and it's immediately your turn again. You even get to draw a card for your turn. Um, it's a really insane effect that I imagine if it if you are able to use it, um, if you're able to use it in a really good situation, it sounds like it's going to swing the game into your favor pretty heavily. Um, the reason I'm not putting this deck into my column with definitely will affect the meta is because it does need some setup and it does need some cards around for it to get going. You need to rare candy or set up manually your Magnazone. Um, for Rising Star on Solgaleo Prism to work, you have to have energy in your discard and your opponent has to have multiple Pokemon in play. Um, Timeless GX costs 5 energy and even with Magnazone's ability, you might not be able to get 5 energy into your hand. Um, so it... Looks like it might take a lot to get it set up, but I think it will work um, in games where you get it going or if we find the right list to make it consistent. And last, but hopefully not least, is the new Empoleon. Um, I'm a big fan of Empoleon. I am a big fan of this card, actually. I just hope I can get it to work well. Um, I think it can potentially be a Tier 2 deck. But we'll see. Um, I'm definitely going to be playing a lot with this next week when the set comes out on PTCGO. So let's look at this card. It's a 160 HP water Pokemon Stage 2. Non-EX, non-GX. Um, for one water and one colorless, Total Command does 20 damage times the number of Pokemon on each player's bench. So if you both have full benches, this attack does 200 damage for a water and colorless or one counter energy if you're behind. And then possibly 230 with a choice band. So total command is your main attack here. 
Its other attack for two water and a colorless does 90 and flip a coin if heads discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon, I believe. Uh, let me just check that if it's flip a coin. No, it's just discard one energy from your opponent's active Pokemon, so you don't even have to flip. Um, so that's what its other attack does. It's kind of a backup. I don't think you'll be using that too much because of its energy cost. But Total Command is the main attack of what Empoleon Dex will be using. I think a natural partner for it is Zorak just because of the draw power. Um, and then you can use a low and Volpix to beacon to search during setup. And it'll also allow counter energy to work if your opponent knocks out that low and Volpix you have sitting there using beacon. Um, Brooklyn Hill could potentially be used in these decks, but... I think you'll probably just use Bridget to set up since Brooklyn Hill will only search for your Empoleons and your Volpix and not for Zeruas or some other potential, excuse me, support and attackers. If you go with Octillery in this deck instead of Zorak, then I think Brooklyn Hill is the way to go. I think you'll be using Brooklyn Hill and it sounds like it would be pretty good. You can get either a Piplup or a Volpix or a Remory. Um, I already mentioned Counter Energy. Captivating Pokepuff, I actually had to check to see if this card was still legal, and it is. It's from Steam Siege. Um, your opponent reveals his or her hand, put any number of basic Pokemon you find there onto your opponent's bench. So this is kind of a disruption card, but it also um, allows you to potentially hit Total Command for maximum damage. Because you look at your opponent's hand, maybe they're holding on to some Pokemon that they don't want to bench, so your total command doesn't do the maximum damage to them, and you can just put them on the bench. Um, it would be really devastating if maybe you find a Tapu Lele GX there, and you just slap it onto their bench with Captivating Pokepuff, and then they don't get to use its ability. Um, so that's it for this, uh, for this video. Those are the cards i'm really looking forward to testing out over here and then these cards i'm also looking forward to testing out but i think they're going to be pretty good right off the bat in some of those archetypes i mentioned so uh let me know what you guys are excited to test out out of ultra prism and what decks you want to see me playing on ptcgo once the set hits Thank you guys for watching. Also, let me know what you think about my new intro that you saw at the beginning of this video. Um, this is the first video that I'm uploading with the new intro on it, so I'm excited about that. Until next time, subscribe, comment, and like if you enjoy what you saw. And I'll see you next time here on Celios Network.